G'day, I'm Justin Mann. Hi, and I'm Kelly Mann, Justin's wife. We farm about 10k west of Beverly. It's probably about 60, 40 cropping to sheep. Mainly Merino, also some crossbreds as well. We we'll produce canola, wheat, barley, yeah, wool and meat. We've sort of aimed to try not to produce as many lambs as possible, I guess. It's probably been a goal the last few years. We've certainly been aiming to push our uh, lambing percentages up. Because of our location close to Perth, we've got great access to the domestic market as well as going through CBH locally. I think with the spread that we've got, across all of the different commodities we've you know spreading your risk growing what you know yields well if you're looking at the why of why we wanted to initially engage in the program it was really around the landscape that we've got here there's a lot of unarable country so we're looking to see how we could better utilize that and with land values and lease values at the moment working with how we can improve our on farm here growing the salt bush the idea being that particularly that sort of autumn period, that we might be able to, you know, if we have a, a late break, can sort of fill that gap. We sort of haven't gone down any other lines of any other sort of summer cropping or anything. It's just trialling these fodder trees in some of these unarable bits to see if either we can use them during the autumn or for our um, lambing use. Like a lot of the paddocks set up at the moment is when you put them in crop, the, those hills and those granite areas which still do have good stocking capabilities were locked out because none of those areas and the gully lines and things were all hadn't been fenced. I think every paddock on the farm has a gully line or a few, a few gully lines running through it. They've all got a lot of unarable bits on there that we could be utilising so just a process of slowly fencing them off and then um, revegetating them. And, and having Phil Barrett Leonard's expertise involved and Wheatbelt NRM is that it actually makes you accountable. We always had lots of discussions about what we want to do and you know, where we're going to take the farm in the future, but actually working with other people, it yeah, makes you actually tick along and do those plans and, and execute it. So I think it actually makes you see better outcomes quicker in the long run. Just sat around the kitchen table, went through everything, then went through for a drive around the farm uh, when he was giving feedback and different discussions. Then to have him formalise some different ideas of what we could work with and then for us to take that away and then go, okay, well, this is what we're gonna focus on for our project. Phil's pretty good um, knowledge in pastures and he's also a farmer himself. I guess he sort of broke break down the times of the year when you know our feed requirements were at their highest. And yeah, the main site was just a gully line, quite a big gully line that ran through one of the paddocks. The aim was to try and sow some pasture in there initially and then seed the fodder trees and then fence it off in the summertime. That was in yeah, 2020 we did that, that worked quite well and we've already used that one for, yeah we've lambed down in that paddock. He got to know how our business operated to then you were talking through a lot of it as to what those opportunities were. So it was like, yeah, with the summer crops, it wasn't a you know big fit for us. So then we honed in and focused on the confinement feeding and the you know salt bush planting. Yeah, how much more potential there is to you know increase our lambing percentages. We've we've gone down the track of running smaller mobs and doing different you know lot feeding as well. I guess we're only two years yeah. down the track of yeah. doing it as well. So we see where we're we're going to get eventually. And from the first year we had um, some great salt bush plantings, but then last year we got a bit too wet, the trees got wet feet and you know a lot actually got washed away. So we're kind of still back to year two in terms of uh, our plantings and how many are going to have to go in the ground this year. So yes, we did get some new learnings out of it, but it was also that confirmation that yes, we're on the right track and that what we're doing is going to get to the, the goals that we're thinking in the, in the long run as well. Just having that expert uh, feedback as well was really, really good. Phil had gone and caught up with other people and throughout the whole process, you can see what other people are doing in their projects and we've had a few field days where we've caught up with each other. So that's been quite good to get different feedback from people as well. And we also did a bit of a farm tour to show the topography and, you know, what our landscape is. We just reviewed what worked well, what didn't work well. It was just a, a very um, open discussion with the, 
the group to show them what we're doing. And the first trial site that we've got, you know, there's, it's right near the York Williams Road. So people are, are driving past there and can, you know, see it. And I know that some people have jumped the fence to have a look at how the salt bush are actually going. So it's probably more the informal community discussions and, and through our own networks that we've been telling people how the project's going. Yeah, probably not picking up too big, a, big an area to start with, you know, just maybe picking a simple site and... Um, it's like a fencing the, it's it the off, fencing, isn't it? The fencing takes yeah. a long time and it's quite, it is quite expensive and that's something probably didn't factor in as much that because it's gully lines and it's pretty fiddly and it's time consuming. And I think it's important to look back on what you have achieved. Like sometimes you can get bogged down in the, oh, we've still got so much more to do, so many more gully lines. But when you actually look back on it, it's important to review what you've done to see how far you have come. Celebrate the, the small wins. Yeah. Getting better productivity and at the end of the day, getting better profits if that means land with percentages and, and utilising land that you're not otherwise. And I think that that has been working with the confinement feeding, smaller mobs and utilising this unarable land. Sometimes you do get a bit focused on, you know, the cropping side of things, uh, being a, a bigger percentage of our overall program, uh, but we've got so much potential to improve our livestock side of the business. And it was a kickstart that we needed yeah. to get things moving and get the outcomes quicker, I think. Yeah, I just say to anyone, take up the opportunity of using expert people and, and their advice and also the network that you create by being part of the project. We just think this is the first little step in you know, many, many years to come where we're just gonna continue how things are going within the project. So it's just the start, really.